Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship uh, on this sunny and beautiful day. Uh, I hope that on your way in, you were able to pick the bulletin where we have our order of worship. Um, today is a communion Sunday. And as you look at the bulletin at our order of worship, you will notice that there is a blessing of the Lutheran World Relief quilts. And as you enter, you also notice there are some quilts displayed. So we will have during the service opportunity to uh, bless these quilts to talk about what uh, this ministry and the people who were, who were involved. At the end, we will have some announcements and then um, I will invite you to follow along. Uh, the scripture readings will be on your screen as well as, uh, as the song. So I want to welcome all of you who are here in person as well as all those who are uh, connected online or who will later on connect, connect online. Uh, it is our 19th Sunday after Pentecost. So I will invite you as you are able to stand for our order of confession and forgiveness this morning. Let us begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive now with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Our gathering team is Lord, speak to us that we may speak. You may be seated. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with our Kyrie and Canticle of Praise. Lord, have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Oh, Christ, have mercy. 
invite you to pray the prayer of the day, which is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading today is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord formed every animal in the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, of, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The second reading is from Hebrews chapters 1 and 2. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Are mortals that you call for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God has left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering and of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God for whom and, though, whom, and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the pioneer of the salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. The gospel this morning comes from the gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter. Some Pharisees came, and to test him, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? 
that said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as this that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for a time of reflection, meditation on this text we have in front of us. And what we have in our gospel text are questions, I think, that has to do with transitions, important transitions in a person's life. I'm thinking about transitions, important transition in a person's life. What would you say is the most important transition in a person's life? For a lot of people, marriage is one of their biggest transitions in their lives. So how about a child becoming an adult? That's all their huge transition. I read somewhere that people say that adulthood begins with financial independence, with the end of formal schooling, with getting married. Some have suggested that adulthood begins when you stop wishing that you were older. And here the word independence is a key word when thinking about transitions. And it reminds me of, of my son when he was about five years old. And I remember where he first started to begin to build some confidence and he became more confident and we will go to the store and he sometimes would tell me, you know, I can carry this on my own. I can take on more heavy bags. Or I don't really need you to do that for me anymore. I don't need help that, he will tell me. And I think I, as I watch him grow up, and I think he was uh, trying to achieve at, at, that point, at, the, at that point independence, a sense of that he can do things on his own. But sometimes, once in a while, he would recognize that he couldn't do things on his own. He would ask for help. And I think that that was really hard for him sometimes to ask for help. Kind of sense, uh, recognize a sense of shame in that, in just asking for help. And I wonder if culture has anything to do with, with that, with us asking for help sometimes in our culture is a sign of weakness. And I think that sometimes we do pretend that perhaps we don't really need God or others when we think about doing things on our, on our own. And I think sometimes we do minimize, or at least I do minimize my own needs because it does make me feel weak when I ask for help. But relationships are all about sharing gifts, helping one another, supporting each other, recognizing that we need each other. And it's about learning what each other's gifts are, and once we bring them, we recognize those unique gifts that each person has and that are essential for the whole of humanity. And a lot of the times we need to be in the relationship, we need to be with others in community to learn what makes me or other unique, what is their gifts, so that we can work together 
so that we can complement each other based on our gifts, and sometimes it takes living together. So today we bless, we will bless these quills that took on a variety of gifts to put together. And what we see here is a product of a collaborative work that involved a variety of tasks and a variety of gifts and a variety of people. And I imagine that it did took some level of trust and dependence as well. Each of you kind of dependent on each other and each other's gifts to complement some tasks and dependent on the material and other people to do certain things. So you all dependent on each other so that you can come up with what we have this a product. That is exactly what Jesus points to when he makes a reference to Genesis when he is asked about legal advice on divorce, which was a topic in Jesus' society that oftentimes was not talked about because there was a variety of topics. But these opinions, there was a lot of opinions about it, but all these was, what Jesus saw was rooted in a socioeconomic status and legality versus the relationship aspect of human life. And that's what Jesus was trying to bring here. It oftentimes was one-sided. Man was the only person who could divorce versus seeing each other as equal and realizing the dependency between people in a relationship. And so I think that's what Jesus is trying to lift up here, the relationship aspect that we're a key in any committed relationship, trust and deep dependence. And now the word dependence, the definition is a state of relying on or needing someone or something for aid, support, and the like. And number two is reliance, confidence, trust. Just like God rely on the man, on the human, to name all those animals God created, just like God entrusted humankind to God's creation, God also trusted humankind. And God recognized the need to have people to care for in God's creation. And God recognized the need for the human person to live also in community. Because God intended, intends for us to live in community so that we can learn about trust and dependence just as God has entrusted and he is dependent of us to care for God's creation. And God, in fact, models this perfect shared life through the image of God the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. And that's a model that God provides for all. What does that look like, community? It looks like a shared community. It looks like being in a community that People depend on each other, relying on each other to support each other. And I think that that's what is at stake when it comes to relationship, that deep state of mutual trust and mutual dependence. A theologian mentions that a reason for divorce is when dependence has scrambled and is beyond repair. And again, the question on divorce goes beyond legality here, but has to do with the relationship aspect in mutual trust and dependence. And if we think about ministry, our life together, ministry depends on all of us because we all share the gifts. We all depend on each other and on God to be able to function as the body of Christ. And it is difficult and hard when relationships do become broken and when separation of marriages and families and friends and community takes place. But also as a community, we acknowledge that pain. When we go through difficult transitions such as these, it is difficult to trust again, to restore that relational life after that has fallen apart. And it takes some time to depend on God on healing our most deep, in, deep wounds. Just like a child, if you were watching a child falling, 
children still depend on adults, even though they have this confidence. After a fall, it takes some time for them to regain confidence in themselves, and they still depend on adults. And that's where this image comes to us in our gospel text. Children, just like women in Jesus' society, were vulnerable beings, and oftentimes their voices were not being were not heard or valued. They were treated oftentimes as, as inferiors. But the gospel this morning reminds us and reads, truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as little children or as a little child will never enter it. And I think this is a powerful statement because it is a call to return to a community life God intended for us to live, a mutual life of dependence. So today God calls us to trust God, to trust each other, to tell us that we can depend and count on God to support us and to care for us. And the, message, and the gospel ends with this beautiful image of Jesus and his children, and he takes them up in his arms and laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. And this really reflects the way God sometimes surrounds and encounters us in our vulnerability when we said we need help, in our pain and loneliness caused by broken relationships. It is at the cross that God encounters in those, in that pain. But there, God embraces us as well with unconditional love and acceptance, just the way Jesus took these little children in his arms and blessed them. So know that God is on our side with us in our journey together as we reflect on that community life, as we also work towards relationships that are equal, rela uh, relationships that value equality and mutual respect and dependence. So my prayer is that we will hear God's call to extend also hospitality and support to those most vulnerable, the voiceless in our world, those who long to be accepted and valued, those whose well-being depend on our care in our decisions. Amen.
now continue with the blessing of the Lutheran World Relief quilts that I mentioned. And before we do that, before we extend uh, a prayer of blessing on these quilts, um, I'd like to um, share a little bit about this ministry. And I was given a good, beautiful description of what these quilts, and we want to also recognize the people who um, recently have been involved, but also people who got, you know, help to get this ministry started here at St. Peter. So we want to recognize and name that those individuals with unique gifts that because of their gifts, we are here with this beautiful, beautiful quilts. So here's uh, um, something that I was uh, given by um, Virginia Smith, who is the, the point person, the leader uh, for this ministry, the quilts. Um, the Quilt and Kid Ministry is the longest running ministry of Lutheran World Relief. Lutheran World Relief distributed its first quilts in 1945 to families in war-torn Europe following the Second World War. And within a decade, in the, the ministry was reaching around the globe, the villages far removed from the world's attention. But today, an average of 300,000 quilts are lovingly given worldwide each year. That's amazing, isn't it? Lutheran World Relief Mission, quilts are highly regarded through the world because of their quality and consistency. The careful adherence to the quilt making guidelines, making sure that every quilt is useful, consistent, and fair. Lutheran World Relief Mission quilts create a tangible, lasting bond between the people who lovingly assemble them and our neighbors around the world who receive quilts in their greatest times of need. And so we give thanks to the countless men and women and youth who assemble these Lutheran World Relief quilts each year. I'm just connecting that with my message, it sounds like people are dependent on this ministry in other parts of the world. Here at St. Peter Lutheran Church, this church has been involved in the Mission Quilt Ministry for over 40 years. That's a lot of years. <laughs> sending thousands of quilts all over the world. In 2018, the quilts from St. Peter went to Iraq and Lebanon and Mali. But we decided that there is a need for our quilts not only worldwide, but right here in Orange County. So this year we will be donating quilts to Wise Place Women's Shelter right here in Santana. When White's Place was contacted, they were very excited about getting these handmade quilts. She knew that women could cherish them. And so there sounds like there is this local uh, community that also uh, will be the recipients of these beautiful quilts. So this time, I do want to recognize individuals and in, uh, the first person that I want to recognize here is uh, Doris Jacobson. And so we want to give Doris Jacobson a hand of applause. Doris, uh, for the 20 plus years uh, that she's been involved in this ministry um, here at St. Peter, uh, she stepped out to the place when a leader for the quilting ministry was needed. And so we want to say to Doris, thank you for getting this started, for all those years of dedication and all the love that you pour out on, on this ministry. So thank you, Doris. And I want to present with to you, on behalf of the St. Peter Ministry Quilt Group, but also on behalf of the Lutheran World Relief, they sent a letter and they sent uh, just a, a token of their appreciation. So here's a letter that I like to read a little bit, uh, and then I want to present this to you, Doris. So it says, Dear Doris, I pray this note finds you well as you continue to do all you can to stay healthy and safe. This year has been a challenging one, to say the least. And I know it has been especially challenging for those who gather to assemble Lutheran World Relief quilts and kits. And yet to have 
persisted because you know that even during a pandemic, there are more neighbors in need of your love for families that need the warmth and comfort of Lutheran World Quits. So thank you. Thank you for your hard work over the years and especially this year, even though we have been apart, we are family bonded in the love of God and our neighbors in need. So please accept the enclosed quilts pin and certificate of appreciation as our gifts of gratitude to you. So if you can come forward with Doris and I'd like to present this to you, I want for you to receive this <laughs> and I want everybody to give another round of applause to Doris. Thank you. Thank you. And we do have, yeah, other names here um, besides stories that, um, you know, help uh, and has helped over the years. Um, and at this time, I want to recognize um, those individuals, uh, Enriqueta Borraza, Rosy Campos, Enrique Sanchez, Patricia Lanz, Josefina Martinez, and Virginia Smith. So, can we give them another hand? Thank you. Thank you. And also all those people who were donated, donating their materials, all those who donated the sheets and the blankets and the fabric and yarn so that uh, the ministry could have the supplies to make this quilt. So thank you all for making this happen. And I, I, they are beautiful, beautiful, really well made. So if you are close to a quilt, uh, if not, um, it's okay. Uh, but if you are, I will invite you to place your hand on them or you look at them or extend your hands uh, towards the quilt. And I will invite you for us to pray and do a blessing on these quilts. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we join giver and receiver, recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We give thanks for the variety of gifts that compose these quilts, donations of fabric and thread and sewing machines, the faithful people who cut the squares, design the patterns, sew the tops, iron the fabric, make bags and fillers, tie and stitch the bindings, provide publicly donate boxes, pack the quilts, bring food to sustain the quilters and cookies and coffee. We give thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make the quilts, the laughter and the shared stories, the joy of crafting something with one's hands and heart for another, and the time to reflect and wonder about the recipient. So we send these quilts as a sign of God's love and blessing for each person who receives one, trusting that their quilt will be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear. A symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, a reminder that each recipient is a beloved child of God. So we pray that these quilts will serve a useful purpose in the life of the recipient, that they will bring warmth in the cold shelter from the sun and heat, a wall for a home, or a care for a few precious belongings. May be a step in recovering one's life and a message of care from someone they never meet. We remember those who have received our quotes in the past and pray that their lives have returned to stability. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labors and the whole mission of Lutheran World Relief that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive as we are, as we are soon together in the unity of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, thank you. We now continue with uh, the prayers of the people, and I will invite you to respond after each petition with hear our prayer. So let us pray. My children and hearers of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in 
Gut. Holy One, you have raised up faithful leaders throughout history, empowered those discerning a call to ministry in all seminarians, that they continue to be formed for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation, revived declining species, and preserved endangered lands, cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world you created. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You desire for us not to be alone and to live in community with each other. Strengthen relationships between, between nations and people that we celebrate and support one human family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You share in our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those gathered here today. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship with us and remind us of their continued role in this community of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We now lift all those uh, who are in our hearts, and uh, this time I will invite you to either out loud or in silence name all those who need prayer who are in our minds and hearts this morning. We hold in prayer for healing and restoration, Lennon or Lowe, Jasmine, Catherine Weiss, Irene Perfino, Pastor Derek Forseth, David Petrick, and for comfort and peace, Barbie Lorenz, Geraldine Prisley, and Bonnie Thompson. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us. Strengthen our trust we have in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts, known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I will invite you to turn to your neighbor and with a wave, I extend this, uh, the peace of Christ, at least see each other and say hi, <laughs> say the peace of Christ be with you as a sign of peace uh, as we prepare for Holy Communion. And our offering uh, hymn is, Lord, listen to your children praying. Let us sing.
let us pray. God of abundance, you cause the streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite, Unite them, them with, with the offering of our lives to nourish, to nourish the, world the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord. And Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give, give our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Take and eat, do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our and Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy and kingdom come, come. Thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this, this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The table is set, and all are welcome to participate in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We invite everyone who believes in the saving power of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to share with us today the sacrament of Holy Communion. Everyone who believes in Jesus is welcome at Christ's table. So I now invite you to come forward, each of you, to receive the elements. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your hearts and nourish us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We have a time of announcements, and um, Steve, if you want to get us started with announcements, and then I'll share more. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. So last week I mentioned that our church ministry groups had met about, gosh, in early September to really have discernment about the church and where we're going, the things that we do, and so on from there. So what you have is that hopefully you grab a newsletter that was as in the entrance as you're coming in. If you have not, make sure you grab it on the way out. On the back of the newsletter is some events that we have decided to do at the church. And so this week I'll talk about the events that we'll have for the church. Next week I'll speak a little bit more about each one of our ministry groups and the behind the scenes action that's being done from those different groups itself. So just to go over a few of the events that we have planned, we continue out with our food distribution. It happens once a month every about um, on Tuesdays, and the Tuesdays are aligned there on the, uh, on the flyer itself. Later in this month, uh, on September, excuse me, October 30th, we're gonna have a family harvest where we have invited in local businesses in our courtyard to be able to work with uh, the Willard neighborhood and provide resources to families about whatever their needs would, would be. We also have invited um, the police department. They're going to have something that's called, uh, oh gosh, I can't pronounce it. I think it's tr uh, trunk and treat, where rather than having kids kind of participate in going to homes for Halloween and all that, the idea is the police uh, would be able to give healthier treats uh, to children. So we're hoping to have um, a really good showing for there. There's a lot of uh, uh, communication that's being done for the Willett neighborhood to come into the church. Also, and most importantly, this will be a way for us to really talk about what we do as a church and all the different opportunity things that we have at our church. So we will have our booth set up with everything uh, that we have to offer. Later in uh, November, we're also having our Thanksgiving service uh, that is going to be on November 21st. That will be a bilingual Thanksgiving service. We're not sure if we'll have a meal after as we have normally done. We're trying to be protective in these pandemic times, but you'll hear more information about that. Also in December, we're gonna try something different by having a live nativity scene that's with the manger and, and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And so hopefully the children that would have come to the family harvest would be able to sign up to play a role in the live nativity scene. So that will be on Saturday, uh, December 18th. And we're hoping to have that. Also, pulling it back to our faith and also giving people an opportunity to come to the Heavenly Father, the Holy Trinity. Our church would be opened up. We'll have uh, uh, candles where individuals can uh, light candles and also say a prayer uh, from here. We then have our Christmas Eve service that would be bilingual on the 24th. We have a special guest this year with the Santa Ana High School Choir that's joining us this year to celebrate um, uh, the Christ's birth. And so definitely you want to make sure you attend for that. That's always joyous as we have that candle that hopefully will not burn <laughs> in our hand. I think we actually changed over to the, electro, uh, the battery powered candles now, but lots going on here. So definitely please keep in touch. Please say a prayer uh, for uh, our church. And also a pastor's message today about talents. There's a lot of talents needed to do this. And so definitely please keep all those in, in prayer. If you would like to participate, no matter what it is, please just let us know. And you're going to see in the next couple of weeks a bit more sign-ups uh, that we have for people to sign up to participate on anything. We also have one more thing I did not mention, is that we're, we're uh, trying to partner with the same organization that the quilts are going to, to provide 
homeless kits for women and then also partnering with um, the Orange County Rescue Mission to provide kits for homeless individuals there too. And so there'll be a day at the Family Harvest where individuals could help make kits to provide that at a later time. So lots going on. Thank you, Steve. And um, these quilts, I wish they will stay, but they will have to be get packed and sent out to these places that we pray. And so this week they will be um, packed and be sent in. Um, and um, if uh, anybody's interested, uh, you can contact Virginia, right? If, you, if anybody's interested in helping uh, this week uh, or whenever, um, just to put them in boxes. I also take some energy to put them in boxes, carrying them to the car, all that. And so if anybody uh, also um, is interested in helping, uh, let Virginia know. So have a good rest of your Sunday. Enjoy this sunshine. I always try to enjoy it. So I will invite you to stand as you're able to, uh, to receive the benediction. And from there, we will um, sing and, and dismiss. Receive the benediction. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending him is God who stretched the spangled heavens. And peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.